Hi guys, Mr. Hill here with your science lesson for today. So we're going to carry on looking at sound and the science that goes behind sound. So today we're going to be looking at can I demonstrate sounds with different pitch and volume. So the sound travels and comes to our ear. We remember we'd looked at this last lesson. So the sound arrives, it's collected by the pinner. So the, the sound waves gather that sound in. I remember telling you, if you put your hands behind your ears like this, it will help you be able to hear more clearly. So if you're in somewhere really quiet, you might see that. Or if you're talking to someone who's elderly, whose hearing maybe isn't as good as ours, they might sit there and put one hand over their ear and say, well, would you mind repeating that? It just helps it in, get the sound into their ear. The next step, it travels along the ear canal and it arrives at the eardrum and these waves make the eardrum vibrate. The small bones, so we have the hammer, the anvil and the stirrup amplify the vibrations, so they make them bigger. And the cochlea then turns these into an electrical signal. This electrical signal is then carried by the auditory nerve to the brain, where the brain interprets what the sound is and we understand what the noise that we can hear is. So I have a poem here, The Sounds Collector by Roger McGough. It's a poem about some of the sounds we're surrounded by and asks us to consider what it would be like without them. A stranger called this morning, dressed all in black and gray, put every sound into a bag and carried them away. The whistling of the kettle, the turning of the lock, the purring of the kitten, the ticking of the clock, the popping of the toaster, the crunching of the flakes, when you spread the marmalade, the scraping noise it makes, the hissing of the frying pan, the ticking of the grill, the bubbling of the bathtub as it starts to fill, the drumming of the raindrops on the window pane, when you do the washing up, the gurgle of the drain, the crying of the baby, the squeaking of the chair, the swishing of the curtain, the creaking of the stair. A stranger called this morning. He didn't leave his name. Left us only silence. Life will never be the same. So just have a think about all the different sounds we can hear and how they help us to interpret the world around us. So obviously you can hear my voice and I'm teaching you using this video. You can maybe hear your pencil scraping across the page as you're writing your notes down. You can hear yourself crunching when you're eating a carrot. So sounds can be loud and quiet. They can be high or low, so we can have big loud sounds and really quiet sounds. We can have really high sounds or really low sounds. They can be pleasant sounds like the sound of a bird. They can be annoying like the sound of a drill. They can be relaxing like a nice piece of classical music. They can be urgent like the music that you have with computer games. They can be pure, so they can be on their own or part of a collection, for example, in an orchestra making a music uh, tune. Now, take a moment just have a think, maybe write a few ideas down. What would it be like with no sounds in your life? You can have a go at imagining what this would be. If you've got a pillow, if you wrap it around the back of your head and hold it really tight over your ears and just have a wander around. The reason I say to put it around the back of your head is so that you can see where you're going. See how different the world appears when you can't hear the sounds that you normally would. Have a go at that. And once you've done that, come back and we'll carry on. OK, how was it without any sounds? Very interesting, I bet. So, as we've said before, sounds are made by vibrations and they vibrate through what we call a medium. This can either be the air as a gas, a liquid or a solid. When the object vibrate so often after a force has been applied so whether it's been hit plucked strummed the air around it then begins to vibrate as well or the medium that they're in so as i said we've got our gases so we've got the air around us we've got liquids you can hear muffled sounds underwater and you can hear sounds through solids 
this creates a sound wave that spreads outwards. Now, in our last lesson, I gave you the example of dropping a pebble into a puddle, and then you can watch the ripples pull out into the edge of the puddle. This is exactly how sound does. Sound is not a directional thing. It goes all around us. So if you were sitting behind me over there, you'd be able to hear what I'm saying because of the way the sound wave travels and the way it spreads outwards. So here we can see a diagram that shows the air particles moving from the speaker to the ear. We draw the sound waves like they're shown at the bottom. So they can be seen, so sound waves can be seen on a special machine called an oscilloscope and it measures our sound waves. So this is an oscilloscope. So it can interpret lots of different sounds and it can show us the sound wave as a computer generated image. And different wave shapes mean different sounds. Short waves, so when they're really bunched up close together, they're a really high pitched sound. And when they're stretched out, they're a low pitched sound. Now you can try this out. If you remember, we did a little experiment with making a ruler vibrate. We can change the length of the waves using the ruler. Leave the ruler really long and give it a flick and you'll get a lower sound than if you pull it right up to the edge and only have a little bit sitting over and you flick that, you'll get a much higher noise. The next things to look at are the height of the waves. Now, if you look at these ones, there's a black line through the middle. That gives us what's called the amplitude. So this is how far away from silence they are. So this line down the middle is your silence line. And the amplitude or the volume of the sound is determined by how far away the peak of each wave, so the very top of the waves, and the troughs, the very bottom of the waves. Oh, hang on, let me just get my mouse there. So the troughs here at the bottom and the peaks here at the top. The further they are away from this line, the louder that sound is. So, as I was saying, waves with a little height or a smaller amplitude have quiet sounds. Tall waves, so they have a bigger amplitude, are the louder sounds. Now, no cheating here. I want you to have a look at these four wave patterns. And which of these four sounds is the loudest? Which one has the highest pitch? Which one is the quietest? And which one has the lowest pitch? Take a moment, pause the video and have a go at these. OK, how did we get on with these? So which sound is the loudest? We're looking for the one that's furthest away from our zero line. So the furthest away from our red line here, we want the biggest peaks and the biggest troughs. So the loudest sound will be sound number two. Now the sound with the highest pitch, we had to remember that pitch was determined by how close together the waves are. And the closer they are, the higher the pitch is. So that'll be sound four will be your highest pitched sound. The quietest sound is gonna be sound one. It's got the lowest amplitude, so it's the nearest it can be to that red line. And then finally, we've got one, two and four. So the lowest pitch can only be number three. And we can see that by how far apart the waves are. So where how far apart the peaks and the troughs on that sound wave are. A single drum is quite limited. You can hit it harder, you can make a louder sound and you can use different sticks, to make slightly different sounds. But a whole different set of drums can give you different volume and pitch. And they do this by being bigger and smaller than each other. So you'll have the tom toms at the top, you will have the snare drum and you'll have the bass drum. The bass drum's the biggest one and it gives you the big low boom, 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 boom that you hear at the base of the, bo the bottom of a piece of music. It gives you the beat. Your task. Can you create a homemade drum kit? Now, parents, if you're watching, I apologize in advance for the noise that you might have to sit through for the next 20 minutes while it's all put together and they do their performance piece. But 
we're going to explore pitch. We would be doing this in class normally. So using items from around the house, create a drum kit that will make sounds of different volume and different pitch. Now, what you can look for, pots and pans are really good because they come in different sizes. So if you can find a really big pot and a really small pot, you can try those out. Maybe try a frying pan, see if you can get a different sort of noise out of that. Wooden spoons are brilliant for using as drumsticks because you turn them around, you've got ready-made handles, so you can hold the spoon end of it and you can use the round end of the handle as your drumstick. Have a look around, try different materials. Have you got a plastic tub instead of using a metal pot? Can you get a different sound out of that? You could have a go at making your own drum as well. If you've got a pot, you can stretch cling film over the top and you can try playing on that as well and see what different sounds you can create. So see how many different sounds you can make. And can you actually play a tune using your drum kit? So using the notes you can make, the different pitches and different volumes, can you maybe make a tune? Video your tune and upload it to Tapestry. Let's see if we can work out what it is. Right. Over to you guys now. Enjoy your task. Please be mindful of other people in the house. You might have someone who's working from home. If it's your parents, you might have a sibling that's doing their schoolwork. They're not going to want you making a massive racket. So find a time when it's OK to do it. And please think about the neighbours as well. Good luck. Stay safe. I look forward to seeing your work on Tapestry.